All right, so we are going to do the process yeah. of cellular respiration. And the whole goal of this is to try to make ATP energy. So all the chemistry we do, the goal is to make ATP energy. So this starts out with somebody eating some food and that food is going to get broken down into glucose molecules and glucose is C6H12O6 okay and to represent glucose I'm going to make a line with one two three four five six carbon atoms so there's hydrogens and oxygens too but to keep things simple we'll just focus on the six carbons okay now your body has to break this into pieces to get the energy out. So the first step we're going to do is do a process called glycolysis or glycolysis. Glyco means sugar, lysis means to break apart. So we are going to break apart the sugar and when we're done we're going to end up with that same piece of sugar but broken into two pieces. Okay, and when we do that, instead of calling this glucose, I'm going to call this pyruvates. So P-Y-R-U-V-A-T-E-S. Now, anytime you break something, you're going to get energy out as well. So we are going to make four ATP energies when we do this. So that's adenosine triphosphate. But two of those four have to be recycled back into the cycle to start the next part. So really, we end up with two ATPs that we get to keep and use for other things in our body. Okay, so I'm gonna put a squiggle around that because that's important. The other thing we make when we do glycolysis is a chemical called NADH. So we're gonna take a chemical called NAD, which is floating around, and it's going to pick up the hydrogen from the glucose and make NADH. And we're going to actually make two of these guys with this process. And we're going to use those guys later. Okay. So these pyruvates, they kind of have two paths. They are either going to have some oxygen where they can continue or they have no oxygen and if they have no oxygen they're going to do this thing called fermentation okay so we already got a little bit of energy so we're good so if there's no oxygen available then we're done getting energy now we just have to get rid of this pyruvate garbage and if you're a plant sometimes in fermentation you're going to make alcohol and I spell it correctly. And if you're an animal, lots of times you're going to make the chemical lactic acid. And this is a chemical that makes your muscles feel sore after you run. Okay? And so that's the end of that cycle. So if you have to do fermentation, you made two ATP energy. And that's okay, but we can do better. So let's see what happens with the pruvates if we have some oxygen. We are going to go into this thing called the mitochondria. Mitochondria. And the mitochondria has kind of a double membrane going on. And when we go into the mitochondria, these pyruvates here are going to do a small transition reaction. And so during this reaction, our pyruvates that we had so there's one, there's the other. They're going to bust apart into some smaller pieces. And when we do that, we're going to end up with some carbon dioxide garbage. We're going to make two of those. And we're also going to make two more NADPs. I'm sorry, NADHs. Okay. So if we recap back to the beginning, we had a big glucose. We broke it in half by glycolysis, and now we put it in the mitochondria, and now we did another reaction that broke it apart a little bit more. Now we're going to take this and break it all apart in a cycle called citric acid cycle. So each pyruvate is going to go around and around and around, and we're going to break it apart and make some more stuff. So we're going to end up making... 
another ATP, which is important. We want those guys. We are going to make some more NADPH. We're actually going to make three of those with the citric acid cycle. We will have some more carbon dioxide garbage, CO2, that we're going to get rid of. And then the last thing we're going to get is, similar to NADH, we're going to get FADH2, which is um, has just a little bit less energy than this guy, but it's still going to carry some energy. Okay. Now, this cycle happens twice because we have two of these little pieces, and they are called acetyl-CoA, E-C-E-T-Y-L-E, CoA. So we have to go around twice, so actually we get two times three, two times one, two times those, and two times those guys, okay? So overall, if I count, we made two carbon dioxides from transition, and we'll make four here. So really all together, we have a total of six carbon dioxide that we've gotten rid of, okay? Um, all together, these NADHs, we have six here, plus two here, plus two up here. So if I take all of these guys together, we have a total of 10 NADHs we've made all together, and we have two FADH2s. Okay. So the last thing we're going to do is take these guys and go to something that we call the staircase. It's the electron transport chain, or ETC. And these 10 NADHs are going to do a series of small chemical reactions. And at the end, we're going to end up with all of those H's broken apart. And all the NADs are going to go back to recycle. So they'll go back and pick up more H's and do it again. The FADH2 will also do this, but it has less energy, but we'll end up with those H's as well. So we had 10 H's from here plus two here, so we end up with 12 H's all together. And we gotta get rid of those guys. So your body is going to bring in some oxygen. And it's actually gonna bring in six molecules of oxygen, and we're gonna combine that with these H's to make some water. And if I have 12 hydrogens to get rid of, six times two makes 12, so I'd have 12 waters that I made. Now, the most important thing about this is the ATP. So when these 10 NADHs do all this reaction, we're gonna end up making 30 ATPs from those because each one of these is going to make three ATPs all together. So 10 times 3 is going to give me 30. And this FADH2, when it goes through, it's going to give me another two ATPs. So if I add up all the ATP together, we have 30 here from the NADH, two from here, plus we made two more here at citric acid, and we made two over at glycolysis. So 30 plus two plus two plus two, we made a total of about 36 ATP for the whole cycle. And that is the most important thing, is that we were able to make all that energy. So if I recap here, we put glucose in, and we put some oxygen in. We got rid of some carbon dioxide garbage, and we got rid of some water garbage going out. So the chemical reaction overall, we started with our glucose, and we needed some oxygen going in, six of those. And with all these chemical reactions, we ended up with six carbon dioxides at the end, plus six molecules of water, plus about 36 ATP energy at the end. And that is cellular respiration.